Hey, have you ever wondered what eco-friendly products are being used by professionals aboard super yachts? Well, in this episode of the Green Boater TV, we are going to meet a professional stewardess aboard a super yacht in Italy who is going to explain how she keeps her boat in top shape using eco-friendly products throughout. <music> Welcome, Kira. Thank you so much for having me, Bruno. It's an absolute honor to come on, on board and chat to you about how we can all make a difference in the yachting industry. Well, the super yacht industry is an industry to itself, but for all boaters everywhere, there's so many things that we can share together. So today we really want to talk about some of the things that you have learned through your experiences about the eco-friendly practices on a, on a boat, some of the tips that you give, some of the things that have worked that haven't worked, and also the products. Kira, before we do get into these timely topics, just to, to lay the foundation a little bit, tell us how a, a person of your caliber came from South Africa to be on a yacht in Italy, if you could do that in five minutes. Absolutely. So uh, for me, I had never heard of super yachting. Um, I was quite happy in South Africa. I owned um, three of my own restaurants as well as an events company. And my family was well rooted in the tourism and hospitality industry in many cities of South Africa. And I, I went through a bit of a life changing moment. And um, yeah, a couple of my friends were doing yachting, figured it was something that I should probably give a, a try and uh, got onto my first vessel and absolutely loved it. Um, but I did think I would be here for just one year, take a, a break from what I thought was the real world, my, my lifestyle. One year and I'll be back and I'm going on five years now wow. and uh, I'm not going back. I'm quite happy. Yachting is quite an incredible industry. Uh, amazing people, amazing itineraries, destinations, very ad adventurous. And it just, it's not for everyone, but it is just the most amazing industry. I'm very happy in it. And for those of us who own boats that are much smaller than super yachts, we see super yeah. yachts going by. But um, yeah. it's amazing to me what I've learned recently how passionate the super yacht industry is the people who are providers and uh, employees and staff and managers and professionals are so keen about the environment is this a trend in the super yacht industry absolutely i think uh, everybody is taking ownership i mean we we all live and work on board the sea and the oceans it's our it's it's our office for a, a lack of a better description so we're all starting to pay real attention, take ownership of a more sustainable way for yachting, which is great to see um, because it definitely starts with crew and management and then it kind of filters through to the boat owners. Um, so yeah, we're all paying attention. We can, we can see the, you know, the damage that has been caused uh, and we definitely love our jobs. We love our industry and, and for that future longevity, everybody is uh, paying a lot of attention to it. Now, Kira, you're doing much more than working on a super yacht and providing services. Uh, you do have a bit of a reputation, a growing reputation as being an influencer <laughs> in your industry. You have founded The Green Stewardess, and uh, you've also uh, started a show on uh, Yachting International Radio about eco-tips. Tell me a little bit about The Green uh, Stewardess, uh, some of the things that uh, are your values and what you're trying to accomplish. Absolutely. So um, the Green Stewardess was founded last year and uh, it came from a very organic place. Um, as I mentioned, I've been in yachting for almost five years now. And as soon as I stepped on board my first vessel, which was a 55 meter uh, Trinity super yacht for a lovely, lovely family, I was just blown away at the uber luxuriousness of the interior and the exterior. Uh, so that was the first thing that wowed me. And then immediately after, I just noticed how much waste there was, unfortunately, um, in many different departments. And it was even back then that we could see it sort of creeping into our, our, our industry, into the water around us. And so slowly but surely, I kind of went on a personal crusade um, to, to find alternative products, find alternative solutions, um, which I implemented successfully on the boats that I was employed on. And they really worked. Um, I had to trial a good few products some were very bad, some were 
okay. And some were eco-friendly and fantastic at getting the job done. So it was a long process of elimination over many years. Um, but it definitely came from a very pure and honest place of just wanting to make a small difference where I could personally. And then, of course, people started listening and seeing what I was doing. And I was asked to implement systems on other boats. And people were really eager to make these changes. Uh, and so the Green Stewardess uh, was born. And uh, it's doing very well. It's doing great things. And I'm, I'm so honored that we've had such a great response, to be honest. Well, and I see too that you've probably inspired other stewardesses, uh, if, if that's the term, because I do see more and more content being placed uh, online for people in your industry, and, and probably not uh, not just stewardesses, but probably just boat owners and and uh, people who are just starting to understand that they can make an impact. So you have inspired others as well in that story. Well, I hope so. I mean, it's it's really great making a difference, and it you know it makes me feel good about myself doing it in my own personal capacity. So I'm really great, uh, grateful that people are coming on board because it's making them feel good as well. And it's doing good on a larger scale. You know, so many of us think that, uh, especially in the boating industry, which has a reputation, whether you own a small boat or a large super yacht, that it's for the luxury, you know, the, you know, the uber rich, as you mentioned, and they don't care. But boaters do care. They are the ones that actually see what's going on. Did you meet any resistance um, or challenges in trying to implement some of the things that you wanted to do to reduce uh, the impact on the environment? Yeah, well, that's a very interesting uh, question. Um, all the way through from, you know, resistance from boat owners to resistance from crew. Um, and you really, you know, when you implement systems on board a boat, it's, it's really a, a, a slow process. I mean, anything that's, uh, implemented very quickly and takes people by surprise of, often the first reaction is resistance for for crew the biggest uh, bit of resistance that we get on board boats that i consult on and the boats i join is uh, the the water bottles so your your refillable water bottles and fitting in that filtration system in the crew mess at the pantry sink at the galley sink so that crew need to just refill their bottles instead of us buying plastic water bottles store board but it's a very understandable resistance because a lot of the yachts and not all yachts most yachts do definitely do their due diligence when it comes to their maintenance systems with uh, regards to their water filtration and their tanks but it's crew safety first that's always the number one priority and it's very important whenever i implement these systems on board a boat i make sure i get in touch with the engineers and I make sure that they're doing their regular um, water tank maintenance and checks and tests and that that tank is safe and the water is of good quality. Um, and then we put the filtration system right at the end of the line. So it's gone through all the plumbing work and it's the last, uh, the last frontier that it's filtered. So you're ensuring the crew's getting that good water. But crew will be skeptical uh, because, you know, not everybody does their job 100% and that's okay because crew safety comes first. So as soon as that's uh, taken care of, crew are a lot happier. And then when it comes to other aspects, I mean, when we're talking about guest resistance, I think the main resistance comes with the price tag. And a couple of years ago when I started this, um, these eco alternatives, they were pretty expensive to be, to be very honest. And they're actually, they've become quite cost effective. They're becoming very competitive with um, the similar range of products that are not organic, not eco-friendly, not biodegradable. So everything's coming in line now. So there's less resistance from a budget perspective. But I always tell my, um, my clients, my chief stews, uh, the captains on board, that you can never force the owners to do something they're not comfortable with. If they want their molten brown crew toilet, I mean, guest toiletry or their the Hermes, the Bulgari, that's okay because you can still get the crew to take the more eco-friendly route, even if the guests want to stay with their, their choice. That's their choice. And to be honest, all of the luxurious brands, they're definitely going to come around to the eco-friendly alternative as well. It's going that way, which is very exciting. And then they can keep their Hermes because it'll be organic and eco-friendly. I have found just in my brief time, uh, trying to implement these systems on my own boat 
yeah. is that I'm always surprised when you share with somebody what the issue is and what the solution is and what the impact could be. I'm surprised actually how positive people take it. They go, oh, I didn't know. And I think that's part of it is just educating. That's probably part of your role is you meet resistance, which is fair enough because people aren't you know, naturally in their own habits. But education must be a big part of you convincing them to change some of those behaviors, which have, have you know, little behaviors, but a big impact. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I, when I work with management companies, I completely offer my services on going on board and talking it through with the crew, kind of giving them a bit more information so they have a bit more understanding so they can relate to why it's necessary. And it's a big part of it is also changing old habits. And, and getting into new habits, which can, it can be really tough. It can be super challenging to drop old habits. Um, but I was, I was very surprised every time I go on a board a boat, I mean, 90% of the crew are all for uh, the implementation of eco-friendly products. There'll always be a small percentage that resist it. Uh, but on a whole, it's great to see the feedback, great to see positive steps being taken. Um, I was just in Barcelona, Bonetti Yachts invited me to be a guest speaker at their annual Yacht Master event. And um, it was so well received, lots of great feedback, lots of very positive interaction, some good questions and a couple of like light bulb moments. And it, it kind of felt like we were all coming together and we understood why and where we need to go with uh, sustainable yachting. You know, that's so encouraging to hear because again, our perception on the outside of these super yachts is uh, these folks don't care. That's really encouraging. If there was a boat owner of a large yacht, super yacht, um, and they were looking to move in this direction, where would you start? What were the things that you would say are the low hanging fruit that are simple to implement that do have perhaps a, a good impact? How would you begin? So the two main areas that are the easiest to implement um, and also very cost effective and uh, quite convenient, to be honest, um, and convenience comes from what we are offering as, as the Green Stewardess, but I'm sure it can be sourced elsewhere. And that's uh, number one is your eco-friendly cleaning product. Um, and number two is your eco-friendly crew toiletries. Oh. Um, we have a large range of eco-friendly cleaning products. And um, I always have to reiterate that, you know, we can see the plastic floating next to the boat in our oceans and seas, but we can't always see that uh, chemical that's being washed into the ocean and doing even bigger and more catastrophic damage, bleaching coral reefs, you know, poisoning, um, hatching grounds for fish. And, those are the easiest steps you can take just to find a, a good eco-friendly range, but it must be kind of, you have to do your research. It must comply to those eco-friendly um, regulations. A lot of those products go through loopholes, but uh, so yeah, implement your eco-friendly cleaning systems, your laundry detergent, nice biodegradable, non-toxic, uh, dishwashing liquid, your bilge cleaner, engine cleaner, um, all of those products can be sourced rather than the chemical uh, store-bought products that we're all very used to, our old habits. Yeah. And then so, the second step, like I was saying, is the crew toiletries. It's, it's a really simple and easy system. And all of these products, we advocate bulk buying. So instead of buying your small 250 or 500 mil product, all of these products, cleaning and crew toiletries, they come in big five liter quantities. So that's less single use plastic and it's a biodegradable chemical free product. If you were to pick uh, two or three products that are your favorites that have, um, <laughs> I call them high performance and biodegradability, eco-friendly. So those three characteristics. Yeah. If, um, if you could mention uh, some of your favorites, both in the galley um, as well as uh, in the uh, personal toiletries, what would they be? That's such a tough one because I just have so many favorites. Um, but my cannot live without and highly recommend for every boat, which is not one of the easier steps, is a Dura bean to cup coffee machine. It's as eco-friendly as coffee can get. Um, it cuts out capsules, cuts out pods. So you don't have that single use uh, plastic or aluminum. It's straight uh, bean to cup and it's, it's super simple. The after-sales services and the, the um, 
just the support from that company um, is fantastic. And uh, you can even get the, the boat owner's favorite custom roasted coffee beans in you know the yacht's uh, logoed bean uh, packet. So that's my absolute favorite. And number two, number two is a toughie. I think, um, I think what makes me feel great when I get this product on board is definitely the water filtration system because it cuts out so much unnecessary single use plastic. So that would have to be my, my second absolute must have. Yes. Uh, I have a couple of products on board I've discovered here locally. Um, and since I've started using them, I know that they are good, but they also smell good. And so I found myself <laughs> uh, actually cleaning more because I like the smell and I know that yeah. it's doing good. And then when other people come on board and they go, what is that? And it inspires them yeah. and they end up taking that off board too. And they start using these kinds of products at home, which helps. So what are some well, of I your- I actually have one of those right here. All right. Um, and it's a, it's a galley sanitizer. You can use it as a general sanitizer as well. It's eco-friendly and it just has the most amazing smell and it is so effective. It is a, a great uh, eco-friendly product made by Yachties, ex-Yachties for yachting. So their range of products is highly effective as well. It does the job, which is something you don't find with all eco-friendly products. And you're buying the liquid for those bottles in bulk, so you're refilling that spray bottle? Absolutely. It's, they come in five liter bulk quantities, and yeah. then a couple of the deck products, they even come in 25 liter uh, bulk products, which is just fantastic. You're really cutting out a lot of single use plastic uh, in that way. And then another fun uh, alternative for the galley are these uh, wax wraps, these wax wraps. And they're a great alternative to a lot of cling foam. Um, and I dropped a few off on a couple of the boats and, and they've been reposted on Instagram. I've had messages from, from chefs and stewies telling me how much they absolutely love them. And once you get into it, it's breaking that bad habit. You actually feel quite proud of yourself. So it's kind of a pat on the back and you're cutting out that plastic. So it's great. I actually, this Christmas, I actually made uh, beeswax wraps as Christmas wrapping paper. Nice. And I'm about to bring them onto my boat for the summer. And I had a, a concern. How do they hold up uh, in humidity and stuff in conditions on a boat? Yeah. And um, they can get a bit tacky. Um, obviously, the, the process of, of rinsing them and washing them after use is strictly under cold water. So it doesn't melt that wax away. But generally, galleys are quite cool places. Um, and uh, so far, so good. Um, I'm sure there's some extreme situations, but in general, they hold up pretty well. Yeah. Now, Kira, the products um, that you just described, as well as the other products, where can uh, we link um, to have our users and our listeners, watchers, um, see these products and um, you know, her learn a little bit more about them and where can they buy them? Absolutely. Just pop online and look us up on our website, which is www.thegreenstewardess.com. Follow us on Facebook and Instagram. Um, and yeah, we've got loads of information and, and constantly having a lot of stewardesses and galley chefs posting our products and rave reviews. Wonderful. Now let's move a little bit into the personal care products. Um, that's an area of the boat I haven't touched yet. So okay. I'm eager to learn what are some of your favorites there. Yeah, favorites, like I said, you know, it took me a long time to work down to products that I trust and products that I would recommend. And I've gone just down to two main products, one for crew, which is, they just smell fantastic, real uh, revitalizing, rejuvenating fragrances and aromas, um, and big five liter bulk quantities. And then with our guest products, um, we source from the UK. They're very organic. They're very um, homegrown. Their essential oils are pressed by the company themselves. Um, and also a fabulous product, great smelling. And they too come in bulk five liter quantities. And a few of my chief stew um, clients, they've just bought uh, pumps to kind of put into the five liter and they refill a lot of those smaller guest uh, toiletries that we're putting out into the cabin bathrooms. Kira, I wanna thank you for your time today. It's been absolutely wonderful and delightful. I hope that we can have a chance to connect with you again, perhaps when this all blows over and maybe lessons learned. And um, 
I appreciate your practical advice. I appreciate your positive attitude. And I think it's folks like you who are, uh, you know, the term influencers has been sort of overmarketed, but you really do um, uh, inspire us to um, live better, to take care of ourselves better, to enjoy boating without <laughs> damaging the environment. So thank you so much. Absolutely. And it's my absolute pleasure to be doing what I'm doing. I'm thoroughly enjoying it. And it's great that it's uh, impacting so many people positively. Thank you so very much for your time. If you have any ideas for future episodes or if there's somebody that you would like to see on the Green Boater TV, please leave your comments in the section below. Until next time, stay safe on the water and try to do your part to help create the ocean you love. We'll talk to you soon.